Okay, so here we are, right? Got a couple of notes that I wrote down just to keep me on point, right? So now we're going to talk about the moon, the sun, and I'm going to put emphasis on wants and needs. So wants will be categorized under the sun and needs will be categorized under the moon. So now let's get into it. This is the first word that I put to be under the sun would be fun. And the first word that I put under the moon would be thinking. And the reason being is this, right? When your needs are met, which is the moon, you pretty much, you know, everything is everything, right? There's no real desire upon anything extensive or associated with your need, right? The needs are met, food, clothing, shelter, you're good, right? So extensive from that would become thinking, right? Like let's say you're in a let's say you're in a closed in area, you got your needs met, and you may see the outside world and everything. However, you are skeptical about it, right? You may even be fearful about it. You may even uh the feeling of uncertainty may touch you in such a way that you may say, well, what's the point? If I have everything that I need at my fingertips, what is the whole point of that out there? Like, who cares? I don't care about that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just for example, right? I'm being a little sarcastic, so bear with me. Now, the reason why I put fun underneath wants with the sun, because the sun is about wants, right? So when you go out to get your wants, or whatever the case may be, you obtain fun. Like, you start having fun, right? Because it's like, you may, just like with the moon scenario, you may look out the window and say, oh, I want that. Oh, I want her. You know what I'm saying? And then you go out there and you go get it and you have fun. It's because you had a desire inside of you that built up and you went out and you engaged in it, right? So, so far, so good, right? We got wants and fun and needs and thinking. And remember with the moon, you're going to be thinking extensive from your needs because you're going to be pondering while looking out the window. Do I? Do I don't? Uh, how do I feel about that? Do I like it? How do I know if I like it if I haven't ever experienced it, right? So fun, that's where fun under the sun comes from. So now the next thing that I have is consequence after fun, right? And then for the moon, I have potential boredom because after thinking can come potent. Now, remember I said potential boredom. Because some people could think their way into a fairy tale land, right, Pisces? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some people can think themselves into writing a Harry Potter novel. You know what I mean? And some people don't care to do that. Some people want to look outside that window and say, I want that. You know, I want that. And I want that. So with that comes fun, right? Now, there's consequence to fun. Now, I'm not even saying that consequence that all consequence is bad consequence is consequence right cause and effect right you you do something or you associate yourself with something else it correlates and then a response or a consequence comes from it right so what can happen though is the potential for some type of ailment or some type of discrepancy or disruption to um your well-being and even in some cases, your immediate needs being met, right? Now, with potential boredom coming under the moon as well, you know, there is a um, potential for an ailment there as well, right? Maybe deteriorating as far as, you know, social skills goes, right? You may not have very much social skills at all, like you, and you may suffer from that, right? But if we look at it from a microscope from where you haven't ever interacted with humans ever before, you wouldn't even know what that felt like, right? I mean, it's, pr it's pretty bizarre to even use that as an example. However, let's get back to the scenario in the beginning is where, you know, you're a person with your needs met just looking out the window. You may see other people interact with each other and all of that. So perhaps that takes a toll on a person who is more along the lines of their moon and their needs being being met and they're saying, you know, they might hear the voices and say, well, you know, that's something that I want to 
participate in, or maybe not. You know what I mean? Um, so perhaps a potential ailment can come from that as well. Now, I closed it off because you know I could just keep on going with these sun and moon things, right? But I closed it off by stating, you know, under the sun, with the consequences and all. Like if you can't experience to know, right? then what's the point of even breathing and being alive? If you can't experience to the level or to the extent of getting a consequence behind it, like, so what? what's the point of life, right? And then under the moon, one would say, well, is there harm in mere survival? Because for the, some, for the same person who feels that way about the sun, what is... You got to ask yourself, well, what is, or you, should, you might want to ask yourself, what is so terrible about surviving? What's bad about survival? What's bad about your needs being met every single day of your life and you living, right? Like, is there something wrong with that? So this is deep stuff. When you really, truly think about this stuff, it's deep because... If you had to choose, and in a lot of time in our everyday lives as people, we choose between these two planets. We choose, or these two um, luminaries, we choose between these powers. Um, and in some instances, they correlate and they, they balance each other out. They work each other out. We can get to that. Uh, let's get into that right now, right? Because I decided to look at a little psycho put a little psychological twist on this as well. So I looked up um, Maslow's hierarchical um, needs, right? So this is, I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but, you know, I did this a couple of times in college or whatever the case may be. Maslow was a, um, a scientist who came up with this, like, pyramid thing of depicting of how people associate themselves with their hierarchy of needs and you know some people can say well you know i do possess those needs like i understand maslow's needs theory and everything however they may come in a different order um and i can see how that can be however i'm going to keep it on the terms of how maslow framed it and how i guess you could say the majority of people associate themselves with this structure as well so at the base root of this pyramid right is psychological it's psychology at the base root of the pyramid and this is interesting right because at the top of this pyramid is self-actualization so if we rephrase this in terms of astrology then we can definitely state that the base root the bottom psychological aspect is associated with the moon and the top of the pyramid self-actualization is associated strongly with the sun that is evident now I'm going to name the um, the installments, if you will, or the levels of how this um, escalates, right? Ascends. So after psychological, it's safety, and then after safety, it's love and belonging. After love and belonging, it's esteem, and then at the top, it's self actualization. So let's break this down. We're using the same scenario that I used about, you know, having your immediate needs met every single day of your life. But you peer out the window and you see other people living a life that you have yet to experience. Right. So the psychological, the mind tells itself and on a rep repetitious level that, look, I got three hots and a cot. I'm good. Like all of that other stuff. I don't really care. Like they could play out the window if they want. Maybe that's your attitude. And maybe on the flip side of that, you have a desire inside of yourself and you say, you know what? I want the girl. I want the girl. I want the hot chick. I want the crossing guard, whoever, whatever. Right. So the next level of this ascension is safety. So how do you know it's safe? Because if you want to get to self-actualization, and if we look at it from this order, we are stating that this solidifies that you should live your life based upon your needs being met first and foremost. And that is primacy, primacy, primal, right? That is first and foremost. Self-actualization is the pinnacle. So self-actualization would actually be the desires that stir up inside of you should you be looking out the window and want. And you would say, okay, in order to get to that point, 
you know, I have to go through these levels first. So you may see the chick outside the window, right? And you say, yeah, I want her. She's hot. I like her. I want her. You know what I mean? I want to I wanna be with her. I want to I wanna be her lover, right? And you say, okay, well, is it safe? Is that her boyfriend that she's talking to? You know what I mean? Um, is there, you know, is somebody, is, is there lions and bears and tigers outside? Like, is there stuff around the corner or around the corners of the buildings that I can't see that may be harmful? You know what I mean? All of these things come into play and you start asking yourself, is it safe? You know, is she safe? Is, you know, what type of consequence can you get? How do, how do you know it's safe, right? So you may see, she might be a crossing guard. So she's got a badge on. Perhaps that's a sign of safety to the one looking out the window. Perhaps there are police officers surrounding her each and every day that you look out the window. So that may build up a little bit more safety, depending on who you are these days, right? What, how do you know what's safe, right? So, again, I can, I can parallel looking out the window to looking at TV today, right? So if you look at TV today... If you ask everyone in the survey, is it safe to go outside when you see police officers, everyone's answer is not going to be the same. You understand what I'm saying? So it's kind of like one point for the moon here, zero for the sun right here, right? Because if the next step is safety, how do you know going out there to engage and get into some activity is going to truly be safe? How do you know? Right? It's, it's just like the same attitude when people say, Yo, I can't rely on other people to do something for me or do something to this extent because I know when I do it myself, it gets done. You know what I mean? Or, you know, I've done it before and I put this in other people's hands and they've they failed me. You know what I mean? For whatever reason. So I, I keep this thing to myself or I do it inside of this realm because it's a safer thing to do. Right. Now, let's use the flip side to that. Let's say. You know, this person more along the lines of the sun characteristic says, determine to themselves, yes, it is safe to go out there. There are policemen everywhere. There are, you know, snipers on top of the roofs just in case anyone tries to lay a hand on me in a negative type of way. You know, I will be safe in every step that I take here. So, you know, the person feels safe. So now they reach the next plateau, right? They are on their way to self-actualization. Cool. Um, so now the next step is love and belonging, right? Love and belonging. So love and belonging that would be that would come from being social, right? That's where that comes from. Some social interaction, and you actually feel wanted, loved, respected, and you know, just you feel like you're friends with people. You feel needed. You feel wanted in some type of way, and it could be a beautiful feeling, right? Um, so. Again, if you're living along the lines of the moon characteristics, you're probably going to have poor social skills because with your needs being met. Now, this depends, though. Again, this depends, right? Because I'm speaking from a mindset that like some type of prison guard is bringing you a tray of food and water every day for your survival. You know what I mean? But if we base it upon like a community thing, and we're like, oh, us together in this community, you know, we grow the crops or we bake the bread and that's how we have what we have, then that might be a little bit different, right? Because you may socialize with the immediate people that you need to socialize with, which brings the things that you immediately need, and you may be just okay with that. You may say, you know what? I seen them argue with each other outside one day out this window, and I didn't like how that went down. You know, or I seen somebody face get slashed out there the other day, and I didn't like how that went down. You know what I mean? So you may say to yourself, well, you know what? I'm not, I don't have to go out there. You know what I mean? So again, I'm making a parallel to the TV because you may see this stuff on TV as well. And TV is amplified to what level now in the Aquarius age? Like it's everywhere, right? So people may just be so in their thoughts about what is going on out there now that their determination of safety may differ or it may fall along the lines of something that just makes them comfortable to get their immediate needs set. And then you have the other side of things with this, the sun character, which is what says, you know, I feel loved and I feel a sense of belonging now. So, you know, it, it, it may be addictive because here comes the wants again, right? So let's say you go, you look outside the window, person under the sun characteristics, 
you see the hot chick, you go out there, you get her, you become her lover, right? Then you see her sister, and her sister's hot too. Runs in the family. Genetics are just, yeah, like, fuck yeah. You understand? So you're like, okay, how am I going to get a sister now? Now, a sister may speak to you. You may speak to the sister, and the sister make you feel welcome and good at home, too. She make you feel like you belong, too. She's showing some love to you, too. And it may not be to the level that you desire, right? But maybe you're just breaking the ice, and you start thinking to yourself, well, if I got that chick, I can get a her sister, too. I can get both of them. You know what I mean? In the sun, you want to have fun, right? You want to be happy, right? Because if we talk about what Alyssa sparked, right? If the moon is falls along the lines of the things that make you not happy in life, then the sun would be the opposite of that. So you start engaging with this love feeling. You start engaging with this belonging, and then it starts to pervade. It starts to become more want, want, want. I get more chicks now. I get more hot chicks. I get all the women. You know what I'm saying? So... Here you out there, you're actually enjoying yourself, you're having fun, right? So, the next level of this is esteem, right? And this is pretty much what I just said already. Like, once you become accustomed to getting the things that you want, it builds your self-esteem. So, you know, sometimes people are out there and they're like, oh, you know, these people always get this, these people always get that. But they do the most outlandish or terrible or hurtful things to people or it may seem that way, right? And it's like their esteem level is so high because either they got away with it or, you know, they've been forgiven or, you know, some people just don't. Or some people have high tolerance levels and put up with them. You know what I mean? And it's to the point where it's just like, oh, I'll, you know, I survived this long, I'll survive again. So their self-esteem gets built from that, whether you're doing unwarranted things or warranted things right so that's the next level right before self-actualization and self-actualization is i gather the epitome of your desires right your desires being uh actualized right being implemented you whatever you thought about in the psychological terms at the base root of where your moon is your instinct of survival is it came out to full length and now you are this fuller person seasoned if you will now to what extent right now that's to what extent self-actualization comes from um or reaches should i say is another conversation in itself right um how much you're favored or not favored at that level again totally different conversation but how it correlates with your psychological well-being at that point is pretty much why i'm doing this video right now because if you did all of that and you ascended to through all of those levels to reach self-actualization. Is that an ending point or are you truly fulfilled with that self-actualization? Because it's you can, in smallest terms, I guess you can say, you can put it as simple as setting a goal and achieving the goal, right? Once you achieve the goal, do you say, okay, that's it, game over. I'm going back to uh, my three hots in the cot and looking out the window now because I did what I desired to do? Or does it become, again, as a, a, the wants become an addiction, right? And this is what I was talking about in the previous video, how your needs, which is a moon characteristic, can become your wants because, you know, all of a sudden you're addicted to coffee now because you tried coffee. You know what I mean? But uh, but coffee originally, initially, was not your need. It was a want. You know what I, you understand what I'm saying? So it's like when people, when you see people who have um, bright personalities that are loud. I'm just going to use the word loud, right? Um, because you can have a personality of course but it can be humble it can be uh it can even be docile right it can be but it can be a lot of other things except loud and loud doesn't necessarily make 
you have a great personality, it just means you are loud, right? So if you see a person who suffers from this, then it is plausible to research how they became that way, right? How they got that way. So if you see any type of biographies and stuff like that, documentaries on people's lives, then, you know, if you see them in a state of shambles and you see them as this figure who is a great figure or someone who self-actualizes, what we're going to use, the terminology, then you would have to say, well, why? Right? Especially if you are living more along the lines of the moon characteristics, this is going to be the perfect time for someone like that to say, well, why did you go through all of that, right? So just like the last questions that I put at the bottom of the list, on the sun, if you're not going to experience and have fun, what's the point of life? And then the person with the more along the lines of the moon says, if there was no harm in mere survival from the beginning, what did you do all of that for if you're in shambles now, right? So... What I'm saying here is people can actually become ashamed of self-actualization, right? You, okay, and I'm talking about stories that you hear when people say, I regret doing that. I regret doing that and I regret doing this and I regret doing that because of the state and this could be a mind state that I'm in now, right? So this gets deep because the self-actualization, or should I say the bringing the inward out which is like a scorpio mechanism right bringing the inward out actually destroys some people so one will have to question where along the lines did um love because what is that love and affection or something like that was one of the levels of ascension so sometimes you like you see people who have it all, so to speak, and they're like, oh, but you know, but they feel so lonely, or they feel detached, so they feel nobody loves them. So where in the in the pinnacle of self actualization did that deteriorate, or when did that stop happening, right? When did that love stop occurring? So a person like me, from the analytical scope, would say, well, what about the people that were there when you were merely surviving? Right. So if we talk in the context of, you know, the people in your immediate neighborhood or community, you know, if y'all bake the bread, if you and your neighbor bake, break, bake bread. Right. Um, or one of you bake bread, the other one grows crops, whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying. Right. The simple the simplicities of life that nurture your survival. If you build relationships with them to some extent despite how boring it may be because you're not like traveling on private jets and you know um, going on roller coaster rides and spending nights in hotels you know you might develop the type of relationship with these people that are stronger or um, more more along the lines of being trustful you know what I mean dependable reliable because it's like you know no matter what because the focus is on the immediate needs, then you don't have to worry about, you know, and this is done on a repetitious thing, right? This is done repetitively. Then you know that this is a community. You know that this is a people. You know that this is um, a relationship that is truly interdependent and not based upon what someone is willing to do outside of this primacy for the sake of fulfilling desires, because that's the gamble, right? That's the risk that comes with the fifth house, the sun, and the whole Leo energy, right? So I, I need something new. I need something different. I need to know that there's more out there. I need to know, you know, that's fire sign stuff. And I get it, trust me. And all of us who follow this astrology stuff, we all get it, you know what I mean? This is just to extend the dialogue on the differences, the functions of the sun and the moon. All right. So with that being said, I believe that I'm going to come back again and I'm going to use examples of how the wants either I'm just going to pretty much switch the scenarios around. Right. Because we just spoke about Maslow's hierarchical need structure and it ascends. 
from the moon to the sun. So I'm going to get more in depth on the reverse roles. To let's say, let's say we start from self-actualization with the sun characteristics and we take it and descend down to the psychological.